Kinetic sculpture, which we have discussed previously, is relatively new to the tradition of the Western fine arts. In the 1930s, Alexander Calder began exploring the possibilities of movable sculpture with his series Mobiles. The term Mobiles was incidentally coined by Marcel Duchamp to describe certain kinetic pieces of his own making. Today, many artists who explore kinetic sculpture do so through the media of machinery and electronics. Any work that utilizes this type of technology is referred to as new media. This piece by Tim Hawkinson is another self-portrait of the artist. He overlaid a large format photograph of his face with a second layer of the same features. Each facial feature is connected to an independent motor that is hooked into a circuit board. A computer then randomly generates the orientations for the various motors and their associated features. The result is a bizarre, moving display that attempts to create the appearance of different emotional states. The title of this piece, Emotor, is a pun that combines the words emotion with motor. This kinetic piece, entitled Cloaca, is by the contemporary Belgian artist Wim Delvoy. The piece, which was designed by Delvoy in collaboration with scientists from the University of Antwerp, consists of a grinder and a number of glass jars connected by tubing. Every day, two restaurant-grade meals are fed into the grinder. The mash is then sent through the jars, each of which emulates different stages in the course of human digestion. The food is kept at a constant temperature of 98.6 degrees, and each of the jars contains computer-monitored enzymes, bacteria, acids, and bases. When the food has reached the end of its 27-hour journey, it is expelled by the machine. The resulting substance, which the artist sells, vacuum-sealed, is nearly identical in composure and appearance to human excrement. Like Hawkinson's emoter, Delvoy's cloaca uses mechanical replication to question what we define as human. Delvoy's cloaca machine is also an example of sculptural installation. The piece must be installed to take the space of the gallery into account. The term site-specific installation describes work that is tailored to the specific dimensions or history of the space in which it is presented. Artists generally wait to see the particular space before coming up with the idea for a site-specific piece. An installation is often like an assemblage that takes up the entire space. This installation is by the contemporary El Salvadoran artist Ronald Moran. Moran took an eaten kitchen and covered the entire space with a soft, white polyester fleece. Everything from the floor to the ceiling, including the stove, sink, and cooking utensils, is covered with the synthetic material. Even though the type of space seems very familiar to us, its fluffy, unvaried texture makes it appear quite foreign. There is almost a sense of dread that accompanies the possibility of sullying any of the pristine white surfaces. The American conceptual artist Chris Burden has made a number of site-specific works over his career. The term conceptual artist describes anyone who feels that the idea of their work is more important than its appearance or execution. This piece, entitled Samson, consists of a 100-ton jack that's connected to a gearbox and a turnstile. The 100-ton jack pushes against the load-bearing walls of the museum. Each visitor must pass through the turnstile to enter the exhibit, but by doing so, they are ever so slightly expanding the jack. Theoretically, if enough visitors were to visit the exhibit, they would crumble the museum to the ground. By doing this, Burden forces the viewer into the role of both supporter and potential destroyer of the institution. Installations can also be site-specific to an outdoor space. A perfect example would be the Twin Towers Memorial entitled Tribute in Light. The piece, which is composed of 88 searchlights pointed toward the sky, was conceived by a group of artists, architects, and lighting designers. The bright lights were installed at the site of the Twin Towers to serve as a reminder of their absence from the New York City skyline. 
This piece is site-specific because if it were installed anywhere else under any other circumstances, it could not evoke the same meaning or experience.